This is the first video. Uh, we're going to look at this particular set of data, and we're going to calculate two um, basic ratios here. The first one is going to be inventory turn, and then ROA, or return on assets. So what I've done is I've given us a bit of fictitious data here. So I've given us about six months worth of data from a firm, and we have a few things. So we have sales revenue, uh, which is the amount obviously sold uh, physically to a customer. We have the value of those sales at our cost of goods sold, and, and that's important. We also know how much money we netted at the end of it uh, after those sales, so what we actually kept as profit. So anything other than cost of goods sold, so salaries, administration, those kind of things. We also have an average inventory that we kept on hand, and we have assets uh, that we have totaled up over time. Okay, now I've, I've summed uh, some of the more basic uh, data. So um, that is a sum. Sales revenue is a sum. Sales at cost of goods sold is a sum of the six months that you're looking at. And net profit is a sum. It's important uh, for the other two to remember that they're not sums. They're averages. Okay, so... Uh, the inventory metric is an average of inventory. So what we had over the six months on average was 223000 uh, and a few dollars in, in inventory. That's this amount here. And on average, uh, our total assets were just over $6 million. Okay, And that's, that's important because when we get to our formulas, we need a few different things. Now, something right off the top um, that, that we generally don't use in these calculations is sales revenue. So we're actually going to get rid of that. Maybe I should do that in red. We're going to get rid of that. Even if, if we had it, we don't need it. Um, because as we look at both of the formulas that we have, um, you know, we, we concern ourselves with cost of goods sold, profit, and, and inventory, and, and average assets. But nowhere does it calls, call for sales revenue. So we can just get rid of that right away. So let's do our ITR first. So um, IT, actually I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so our ITR or turn ratio as above is equal to our cost of goods sold. So our total cost of goods sold over the period is... Two million eight hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars. Okay, and then we're going to divide that by the average inventory level that we had. So the average inventory level is that two hundred and twenty-three thousand. So let me put that in here: two hundred and twenty-three thousand eight hundred and thirty-three. Okay. So let's do some pretty quick math here. I'm going to cheat and get my calculator. Okay. Um, oops. All right, so that equals 12.72. Okay, so that is our turns. Now, remember, our turn ratio is a reflection of the amount of inventory we have um, to satisfy the sales that we have at, at the cost of goods sold. So that means that our, you know, we kept a couple hundred thousand dollars in inventory, and generally we turn that for this particular period, which is only six months, we turn the inventory 12 times. That's pretty good. That's, that's pretty good. It's, it's not too stagnant, um, which, is, which is great. Now, if you figured that out on a monthly basis, you'd notice a pretty big difference um, between the months of January and the months of June. Because in January, uh, let's just take a look at this, you had 700000 in um, in sales and you had 278000 in inventory. So that, that's pretty good. Um, but conversely, when we get down to June, you end up with 240 in sales at cost of goods sold. You still have a pretty high inventory, though. You got one hundred and sixty thousand in inventory, so you're gonna see that you know not always do they correlate, and some months will be different than another. Uh, but just remember that this ITR that we just calculated is for that six month period uh, from January to June. Okay, so that is ITR. Now, what about ROA? So ROA formula again, it doesn't need sales revenue; it cares about profit. So what we're gonna do here is take the total profit that we've made over the period and we will divide it by the average assets, okay? 
Now, the average assets come from the balance sheet, right? So this is coming from the balance sheet, and our profit is coming from the income statement. So we've got two different uh, financial statements that we're going to have to go to to get uh, these particular numbers on. Okay, but let's, uh, let's do this one in black. Okay, uh, so ROA is equal to profit over the period. Our total profit is 398720 Now, the average assets that we had were $6,073,000. $598. Okay, so that is coming from our balance sheet, and uh, the top part, which is our profit, is coming from the income statement. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So our ROA is, do a bit of quick math again here, 6.5%. Uh, 6.56%, okay? Now, again, that ROA, that's not an annualized ROA. That ROA is for six months, right? So annualized, it would be better than that, all right? Because our average assets are, are probably going to hover around the $6 million mark. We seem to be to have that throughout the year. Um, but we'll probably double the, the net profit. So really, I mean, you can basically assume that you'll double the ROA um, in a one-year period. So um, that is the two very basic ways to calculate inventory turns and ROA.